like it day my birthday Got drip for the hoes that's thirsty Get hat on, got no word ways Got ice cream, no make Hey you guys, this is all the information I could find so far on them being in court and them being locked up. Also a message from the grandmother and can y'all believe this girl was asking for money as soon as she found out her baby was dead? Wow. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. And if you'd like to donate to the channel, Cash App is Chicago Love 209 district court and is now charged in this case with injury to a child serious bodily injury which and tampering with evidence human corpse which involves the death and throwing in a sewer drainage storm drain is the word used where the two-year-old child's body ends up in the bayou um, which is the state would argue an offense involving violence and for that reason, under Article 1, Section 11A of the Constitution, we are seeking the denial of, of bail for this defendant. We would also note that he appears to be a threat to the safety of the community with being on deferred for a violent offense such as aggravated robbery and then having this instant charge. He also has another conviction for assault. Um, so that is our request that you refer the issue of bond to the trial court so, we, so the state may approach uh, Judge uh, Warren and the 209 District Court about our request to not bail. Okay, um, Ms. Amos, what is your position as it relates to bail from Mr. Thompson? Your Honor, I object to the state's request under Article 1, Section 11A of the Texas Constitution and I'm asking this court to set bond in each case at $10,000 uh, I am requesting you to consider uh, personal bonds for Mr. Thompson due to his um, financial situation with regular check-ins with pretrial services and um, no drug conditions. Mr. Thompson is 21 years old and a lifelong resident of Houston. Mr. Thompson is currently homeless and unemployed. Um, it doesn't appear he has anyone to help him with bail. He has no prior failures to appear in the past two years. And I would note that his um, assault charges were misdemeanors and it appears uh, he's been keeping up with his deferred adjudication adequately since 2019 judge others are being charged with um, killing a two-year-old or injury to a child serious for injury okay. Just the two innocent until convicted judge i said charged counsel i know i'm just emphasizing that since you're emphasizing certain facts Okay, as it relates to Travion Thompson, as it relates to the tampering with evidence charge, we're setting bail on that charge at $50,000. On the injury to a child charge, we're setting bail at $100,000. Now uh, we can move on to Sahara Irvin. You can have a seat, sir. Okay, Ms. Irvin, again, is not for medical reasons. So state, what is your position as it relates to bail for Ms. Irvin? Judge, on Ms. Irvin's case, the state has request, uh, has filed a motion for high bond on her case, requesting $150,000. Uh, in our motion, we have noted some reasons to believe that the defendant may be at flight risk. Um, 
Let me look for motion. It's enumerated in the state's motion, specifically um, the defendant is the biological mother of the complainant, the defendant and her boyfriend, the co-defendant injured and killed the two-year-old complainant. After the complainant's death, the defendant, the co-defendant put her body in a sewer drain where it floated into the bayou and was discovered by a citizen. The defendant is a flight risk. She is originally from Michigan where she has numerous contacts and has received money from people that she knows that are living in Michigan and Dallas, Texas. In addition, the defendant has reached out to her mother in Arkansas in which she told her mother she wanted to move to Arkansas and live with her. The defendant's mother refused the defendant's request to move in and live with her. These actions, according to um, the state, show, in our opinion, show the defendant's intention to flee from the jurisdiction of this court. Therefore, we're requesting 150,000 on the injury to a child, SBI. Um, of course, she's not eligible for personal bond in that case. And on the tampering with evidence case, I would make the same request, 150,000, since it's related to the same situation and the same concerns with regard to flight. Ms. Amos? We did not get a chance to speak to Ms. Urban Judge, no position. Okay, on, as it relates to Sahara Urban, on the injury to a child charge, we're going to set bail at $100,000. On the tampering with evidence charge, we're going to set bail at $75,000. I just blame myself. It's like, I just feel like I, I failed on so many levels as a mom, you know? But whatever happened, just you just tell the truth. You just tell the truth. And y'all, they got on national television, both of them, and they lied to the whole world. I was always there. I was always here. And I'm still here. And you were always willing to help, is what you're saying. Yes. I, it was just, I needed a little time. I just needed a, a, a few months. I just needed a few And I told Sahara, I told Sahara, Sahara. It doesn't matter who, who it is. Justice needs to be served. Be in my bottle. Fine. Be in my bottle. I don't care, you mad. Yeah. I'm mad because I, I want to hurt both of them. I just wish that I could have seen something. Maybe I could have intervened. Maybe I could have said, you know, let us stay here with me for a little bit, you know, until y'all figure things out. The couple for my is home. My home. For you and her and all this time, it was just a bunch of lies. That's it. A bunch of lies. A bunch of deceit. It wasn't the outcome that I hoped for. Um, but I wanted justice and if this is, you know, this is the justice that Malia gets, then I think she should, I think she, she deserves justice. How were you feeling when you heard that your daughter was arrested? Um, I knew she was getting ready to uh, be arrested. Uh, I kind of knew, you know, a little, that they would be questioned again. Um, but I, I cried. I mean, it's, it's just sad. Um, just trying to find the right words to say to her. Um, uh, I haven't been able to talk to her. You're not able to see her, so you can't go visit. So, but there's so many unanswered questions. No, I, I don't talk with him. And no, she hasn't. We got a copy of some of the court records and and the information that they said in them about what happened to her is just, I mean, it's just, I don't, I don't know words. Um, have you heard what, what and, and, and then again, it's just what Travion has told the police so who knows right. if it's true right but have you heard what he's said yeah um it just seems unreal 
you know, some of the things that's being said or the things that um, was supposed to happen to Malia, you know, I, I don't, I get really emotional when I start uh, thinking about the things that they have supposed to have done to my grandbaby. Cause I can't fathom why would they do that to Malia? You know, she was a very sweet little girl. She, and she didn't deserve anything that happened to her. And so it, it hurts really bad. I, I sincerely hope that what he said isn't, um, isn't what actually happened because she's a beautiful child and you hate to think of her in such a, a vulnerable situation experiencing so much pain. Yes, very much. Um, but it, it does, it brings into question now for us, for so many people, I mean, I'm not, not just me, but we, I'm at Bray's Bayou right now and we stood out here with him and, you know, he, he said, well, I'm, I taught her this and I taught her that and who would hurt my, this child? I mean, do you, right. do you look at that stuff with like puzzled? Yeah. Yeah. Because they were all lies. And I was like, I'm just like, how can you, um, uh, sometimes I just can't even fathom all that, all, all that they did, all that, all that they did. I was like, and all along y'all knew where where what happened and where she was everything so, and when he mentions he taught her some things like he 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 was working with her on her abc's he was working with her on her colors um there's times i've seen it on facetime you know i'm like well are y'all doing y'all are you doing colors with her are you saying her abc's with her talking to sahara Sahara, like, yeah, mom, we doing her ABCs. We doing her, you know, uh, her colors, her, you know, her, her her name. Do she know who she is? Do she know y'all names? You know, just a, what a two-year-old is supposed to know and, and should be learning, you know. So he, he was actually telling the truth when he said those things. So then do you wonder where the lies come in? or Or was that just he was kind of grasping at straws, you know, trying to find anything that seemed like a legitimate story. Yes. Um, only, only because that was true. So yes, when he said those things, it was true, but then everything else was lies because both of y'all were, were, were covering up where my, where my grandbaby was. It's like, I just, I just, it seemed like a movie. It seems like a something I'm watching on TV every day, every every day. Did you at all at any point during this have any inclination that this is how it would end up? No, no, I didn't want it to end up like this. I I, I didn't I didn't want it to end up like this. But as a human, yeah, in the back of your mind. But you never don't. You never want to think that your child could hurt their own, their own child. Um, is there anything else that I didn't ask you that you want to share about this? How you, how you're feeling or, um, no, do you think that there's a chance that they're innocent? No. I don't, they're, they're, they, they did it. They did something. Their actions caused Malia's death. And they both know wrong from right. So your actions caused her death. So then you have to, you have to pay that, you know, you have to, the word is just, you know, there'll be justice for Malia. Do you wonder how someone could so close to you could do this? Yeah, I, I, I got to try to say, uh, you know, maybe she, you know, with her uh, being on drugs, I got to, you got to try to find something. You, you're on drugs. You, you wasn't in your right mind. Um, 
you you you're being aggravated. So you, you as a as a parent or you know some, you try to try to find things to to say this is probably why you did this to my grandbaby, you know. But then I'm like, no, no, I, you wasn't treated like that. You I I didn't do you like that. I would have never done those things that they say you done to my grandbaby. So I don't know where this came from. I don't even know who that is. So it's really hard. It's hard every day. Every day it's hard. Yesterday was really hard because I just found out. So I was really very emotional and um, crying all the time. I I cried today too, but uh, it's like sometimes um, the anger builds up and there's no tears. Not now. I'm just. I'm just. I just want to know why. Why did you do this? Why did y'all do this? What? Well, what? I, there. I, there isn't even a reason. I don't even know to say why. Because there's no reason why. Because you never. No, no one never should have did this to Malia. It's, it seems like you knew you had a relationship with her. So I mean, if if they said, "Hey, we can't. We can't take care of her." Can you take her? I mean, would that have been something you would have done? Yeah, I would have. I would have. I would have taken her. Yes, without a doubt. And and they know that. Sahara knows that. Without a doubt. Yeah, I'd have gave up everything. Just it's can't. double loss. It's double loss for sure. Yeah. You know, I don't have my grandbaby, and then now I'm not. I don't have my only daughter. So it it, it it's a it hurts really bad. If you was on drugs, it don't matter if you was on booze, if you was going through something, that doesn't give you a right to take your anger or anything out on a child. So you deserve a rotten jail. You don't deserve to get out. You deserve life for killing that baby. You and that man. She just asked me out of the picture after she got the dude. She probably wanted me and she couldn't get me. You, you never know what was, what was going through the baby head and you just start beating on her. Well, your eyebrows certainly raise up. I was actually at the scene when the two-year-old was found, and I did speak with the mother and the boyfriend at the time, as you well know, who were hysterical, crying, and so I thought it was really odd that they began asking me questions about victim compensation right yeah. off the bat. That, I mean, red flags went, yeah. I mean, yeah. why are we even discussing this? about what can we, you know, I, I, how, 
what what are we entitled to? She actually called me the next day and asked me, and I still have the recording on my phone about victim compensation and all of us here at Crime Stoppers. I mean, we're just like, you gotta be kidding me. This, I, this, I've never seen that happen in almost 30 years. Now we observed oh, the body crazy. language, uh, you know, both Tim Miller and I at, at EquiSearch were, were there and we both observed the body language and, and both of us were shaking our heads going, uh-uh, we're not it's buying of any time. of your fake tears. Yeah, we knew it was a matter of time at that time. And then when I went back, I looked up Thompson's criminal history, right? the boyfriend of four months. And then I started looking and poking around his criminal history. And that's where light bulbs went up. There is something seriously wrong. Thompson, Travion Thompson has five convictions since 2017, of which three are assaulted. He was on deferred adjudication for aggravated robbery with a deadly weapon, a firearm. While on deferred adjudication, which is just a fancy word for probation, he was sent to a facility called WIMAC. WIMAC stands for Young Men About Change. This was actually the second time he was sent to WIMAC. He was sent there earlier on another conviction. Both times he failed miserably. He was cited for fighting with staff, fighting with the other residents, not obeying rules. And then while on, here's what really got me, Isaiah, while on probation, he got convicted of assault on probation. And at that time, the court could have said, enough is enough. We've given you umpteenth amount of chances, young man, and you're just not going to change. So you know what? We're going to revoke your probation and send you to prison. That didn't happen. That could have happened. Mm -hmm. He could have went to prison for five to 99 years, and you could have easily done that because he got a new conviction on probation, but instead he was allowed to be continued on probation. I would argue that that decision likely cost Malia Davis her life. One of the things you wrote me, you said, our judicial system failed this little girl. Yes, and it is exactly what I just explained to you. If Thompson, who's been given so many chances, the boyfriend, while on probation for a violent offense, if you get a new conviction, that pretty much tells you you're not going to abide by anything. And at that time, the court had the opportunity to revoke his probation and send him to prison. And that didn't happen. The most, right, one of the most egregious cases in Harris County was four-year-old Emma Thompson years ago when the mother, who was actually a registered nurse, brought a boyfriend named Lucas Coe, and what happened to Emma Thompson, I couldn't even begin to describe, but the same scenario. Actually, her grandmother contacted me and pretty much said what you just said right here. M mothers bringing bad guys around, bad results around. I spoke with the grandmother a little bit last night, uh, Rosalie Jimerson, whom you had on your station. She is so hurt right now and so upset and I told her, we will do whatever we can to seek justice for your granddaughter, and I will get you with the support groups that I work with for homicide survivors, and understand that Malia's death, Malia's death basically has galvanized an entire community. I really hope that we hear something from some officials about how the judicial system, from our perspective, actively played a role in the death of a two-year-old girl and how I always say, and this truly epitomizes, this was a tragedy, yet it was so utterly I had, I just said, in almost 30 years, I've never had that scenario ever, ever applied to me. It just blew me away. And then to follow up the next day with a phone call, I mean, come on, let's be real here. Fine. I don't care, you mad. Um, can somebody press record? Hey, you guys, I guess I'll go check out a really close friend of mine. You like this biker short set? It's currently marked down. It's metallic neon long sleeve crop top and matching biker shorts.
Now they have a lot of nice little items. Like little nice shirts and nice little pants. They're just starting off. But give them a try. Go check it out. See if you like what they got. And, you know, tell them Chicago loves it. You know, always want to see another business succeed. So definitely go and reach out and show them some support. All right, here's a couple of looks. They got a lot of cute dresses. Check them out. Watch the rims, huh?